Welcome into the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. It is Mailbag Monday. Thanks for being with us. I'm Jay Zawoski with Greg Boyson and Mario Tirabasi. Smash that like button for us on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page as well. Podcast listeners, follow or subscribe on your preferred app. And take 30 seconds to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. We have a ton of questions to get to, but we should probably start with the news of the weekend, which I'm sure you've heard by now. Uh, Philip Kurashev's arbitration hearing was completed, and the arbitrator decided on a two-year contract uh, of a $2.25 million salary cap hit. And, fellas, we've all seen a lot of people reacting to that number. Um, If you've not been with us most shows, we want to remind you to not really worry about cap hits until 2024-25, 2025-26. Not yet. And, um, yeah, it's just right now it's kind of a non-issue, so there's really nothing to get worked up about. And with Kurashev, it was kind of like, you know, what the Blackhawks went into the arbitration process with with their number, and Kurashev went in with his number, and I think it was 1.4 from the team and 2.6 from Kurashev. And when I saw that information, I was like, either of those numbers is totally fine. You could justify him making $1.5 million. You could justify making two and a half. So, two two years, two point two five million for a guy who's young. Um, I know it's a two year contract, but really this season kind of feels like figure it out, Phil. And uh, we'll see where it goes from there. And 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 yeah, it's it. You're the Blackhawks are not in a position where two point two five million is breaking the bank uh, or is going to break their salary cap or anything like that. They have nothing but money to spend, and it's it's totally fine. Totally fine for Kurashev. I know some fans are are just programmed to worry about every dollar of every salary, and yeah. for a long while there, we had to be of that mindset. This is not 2013. It's 2023. What is really the difference between $200,000, $300,000? Nothing. Nothing at all. It doesn't affect any long-term plans. This is not going to change the signing of any kind of free agent ever like this. Right. It is what it is. We all sat here and said, Hey, Kershev, I don't know, between 1.9, 2.2 million for the next two years. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. And, and his people, you know, I think Kershev is, is, an, is a nice little player that has not hit his potential yet. We've seen flashes of it. Just, you could say this about every player in your league, but specifically for a guy like Kershev, who doesn't really drive his own play very much, mm-hmm. he's going to benefit from more talent on this roster. Right. He's going to put up better numbers playing in this top six than he did in the top six last year. Or the year before. Or the, exactly. You know, he's got, he's got some defensive responsibilities. He's, he's one of their better defensive forwards. And he's got a little bit of offense. We see the flash. We yeah. see the playmaking ability. He can... Last year, he kind of things slowed down from a bit, like where he was able to take that extra beat on the ice to wait for that passing lane to open or take the shot a second later. We wasn't rushing through things. I say put him out there with with Taylor Hall and Connor Bedard. See what you got. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> There's no reason not to to try that pairing. We've talked about it. Uh, you know this this whole off season. Like this is the year to kind of mix things up, tr- throw things at the wall and, and, and see what sticks. And yeah, can, can Kurashev mix with a guy, you know, a guy who's like a, a facilitator and a finisher like Bedard should be um, a guy who's been an MVP before in this league, like Taylor Hall, if he can mix with those guys, that's yeah. uh, all the better. So why not, remember, why not he, try it? This is a fourth round pick, right? This is not a guy who's expected to come in and contribute right away or in a year or two, yeah. like a first or a second round pick might be. 
He's a fourth round pick. He might take a little more time to develop and fully realize. Look, no one is saying that Philip Kurashev is going to be the next Yarmir Yager or anything like that. But right. you're talking about a guy who could fit comfortably in your middle six, bottom nine on a contender, right? You take a look at those stint. We do this all the time. You look at the Hawks Stanley Cup teams and you say, could a a further developed Philip, Kur- Philip Kurashev have a spot on those teams? Maybe. Could he be Michael Froelich? Yeah. Right. I think for I think that's a that's a pretty decent comparison to the kind of player you're gonna get where offense wasn't the only thing he did, but there was that versatility with defensive ability, uh, versatility up and down the lineup, and the ability to add a little offense when needed, some depth offense. That's what Kurashev does, twenty five points in seventy games last year. That's going to go up. That's going to go up with more opportunity and, and like you guys said, better teammates. So yeah. there's n- r- nothing to worry about. Uh, you know, the salary cap thing is what it is, but I mean you look at I'm looking right now at the numbers for uh, Michael Froelich, uh points-wise, 45, 43. Yeah, career-high 45 points. And that was his first full year in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that is a reasonable way to look at Philip Kurashev. Yeah, if you get 40 points out of Philip Kurashev, that's, that's really good. Yeah, 40 points for a guy who could play the wing, play center, play on your first, second, or third line, play some penalty kill, like – for 2.25 million to have a player like that if he if he finds some consistency and and um you know contributes in in, in those uh assets of the game like there's nothing wrong with that and yeah. he's still young he's what 23 24 yeah. years old like mm-hmm. he's he's definitely still got a lot of hockey ahead of him and he's taken some time he played in Rockford he's you know this is I think this will be his third full season in the NHL now coming up here so um it's like you said, Jay. Like it'll take some some time for some of these players to to fully reach their potential. Not everyone is going to be Jonathan Taze, Patrick Kane, you know, Connor Bedard right away where they jump in and it's just like all of a sudden, you know, they're immediate contributors contributors at the NHL level. It'll take some time. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's fair for Kershev. I'm, you know, as far as for the player, I'm happy that it's closer to to his number than it is to the Blackhawks number. Like. Get your money. You don't. You don't know how long you're going to play the game at, at the NHL level. So, you know, good for him that the the arbitrator ruled a little bit uh, more in his favor. And if you're upset at the number, uh, and you're blaming Blackhawks management, their number was 1.4 or 1.5 million. So they were trying to go very low on Philip Kurashev. If you're mad at anybody, be mad at the arbitrator, yeah. who's a third party person who will never know who it is. That's what we said last week. Phyllis Kurashev. Yeah, the right. <laughs> Phyllis Shevaker. Shev- Phyllis <laughs> Shevaker. <laughs> um, and it fits the timeline, too. It is pretty darn obvious that Kyle Davidson, in his internal clock, is set for the 25 26 season to be the season where let's see what we yeah. really got here. Yeah. And this gives Kurashev two years yeah. to prove if he's going to be part of this long term or not. Especially this year. This year is going to be a big year for him. If he can build off some of those flashes we've seen over the last two seasons and become a consistent player, a top six, middle six guy, probably more middle six than top six. Yeah. But you got two years of this kid to develop and see what happens. And then when you get to the summer 2025, if we still have all these questions about what Philip Kershev could be, you move on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you I walk mean, away. That's the thing. You, you're not trying to win a Stanley Cup this year. So if he stinks... No big deal. And At least you found out. Yes, and if it's it's different if it's Lucas Reichel who stinks, or Frank Nazar who stinks, or Kevin Korczynski who stinks. It's a bigger deal. Yeah. Than a fourth round pick. And look, maybe they're looking at this as in two years, Oliver Moore is going to be ready. Frank Nazar is going to be ready. Ryan Green's going to be ready. Fine. Yeah, Philip Kershev is filling a spot. We trade his rights at the draft. Right. Or we go to arbitration with him again, which he's eligible for. And if he hasn't panned out, they're not going to reward him a ton of money, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So there's really nothing to worry about. The Hawks have roughly thirteen million dollars in cap space today. That's with Bedard sign. That's with the new Kurashev deal. Money is not an issue, and so much of that comes off the books again next year, right? Yes. And everyone's dealing with PTSD from the eight. "He Who Shall Not Be Named" era. Is it eight million in just Felino and Perry that'll come off next year? Yeah, yeah. So like. <laughs> People still are yeah. are bitching and moaning about the Seth Jones deal, and by the time the Seth Jones deal might actually have factors on the salary cap, there's not going to be that much of it left. Right. Tyler Johnson's five million is off the books next year too. Yeah. So yeah. like, there's thirteen more million. They're going to have the most salary cap to spend. They hit to the floor for the second year in a row next year. 
All right, let's open up the mailbag, shall we? Yeah, I think we've much deeper made our point clear about Philip Khrushchev. Uh, I can't read that. Uh, I will read Big for you from <laughs> Big Len. Maybe this is a bit esoteric. 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 Interesting. But I'm curious I think what that means, made... Uh, what's food, that? right? <laughs> what made Alec Regula expendable in a trade as opposed to Alex Vlasic? What didn't Regula show? Or maybe the question should be, what did Vlasic show during last year that made the Hawks want to keep him? Or maybe the Bruins really wanted Regula. You might that's have answered question. your own question there. That's yeah. one of the best questions, I think. That's a, that's a good question. Since I've been like, doing uh, this. The biggest difference between the two, why Regula is uh, expendable and Vlasic at this point isn't, is the size difference. You've got sure. Alex Vlasic, who's just a much bigger guy, but skates very well for a kid of his size and has that reach. That reach is a weapon. Yeah. Um, you don't get kids, what is Vlasic, 6'7", 6'6", 220. You don't get 6'6", 220, 220-pound defensemen that can skate Yeah, and very often. So you're definitely going to give him a longer look. Maybe they asked about Vlasic, and they were like, yeah, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vlasic has a much higher NHL ceiling than Alex I think Regula. so, yeah. Uh, it's pretty evident based on how much time each has gotten at the NHL level. I like Alex Regula. Me too. I still think he could be a, a NHL 6th, 7th defenseman. Yeah. But I think Alex Vlasic could max out at maybe a number four. Um, and you got right Taylor situation. Hall for, I mean, like, right. you know, you got to give up something give to up get something. something. Give up something right. And Taylor Hall is going to be a great asset for, for Connor Bedard in his first year. So yeah. it wasn't just, you know, I just think in the, in the, in the NHL flashes we've seen from Agula and Vlasic, Vlasic looks just kind of better in all categories. You saw, you saw more from Vlasic than you did yeah. Regula. And that's, it, and that's not to say that Regula played poorly. No. It's just Vlasic, I think, showed more. Yeah. So... Uh, but Regula was a right-handed shot, which mm-hmm. they're, they're a little thin on. So I can see why you would say, well, with so many left-handed defensemen coming up, maybe that was a target. But if Boston insisted on Regula, right. okay, yeah. worth it to get Taylor and, Hall. And Vlasic had a little bit of uh, success on the power play this year uh, in Rockford. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think but bottom, line, bottom line is Vlasic's floor is probably where Regula's ceiling is. Yeah, I think that's that's fair to say. And... That's why one can be traded and one, as of now, is not traded. Yeah. And uh, Vlasic's almost a full year younger. It's like 10 months younger. Yeah. Not that it's a big deal, but Splitting hairs, yeah. it's something. Yep. How about uh, Regula and uh, Ian Mitchell reunited in Boston? Good for them. Good for them. That's fun. I hope it works out for both the of them. The Providence Bruins are going to be great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so on the same token of the Taylor Hall trade, dream NHL line mates for Bedard. <laughs> uh, Connor McDavid. And Leon Dreisaitl. Uh, Leon Dreisaitl, yeah. Uh, current or let's all feed time? that. Let's feed that Edmonton, there you <laughs> Edmonton go. rumors seven uh, years from now. Current no. players, I would probably, yeah, let's put two Connors together and anybody. Um, right. Me, as a third guy, <laughs> I'll just <laughs> surrender <laughs> my stick on Just stand guys. in front of the net with I'll your stick. Uh, your skinnies. Works nice all, all time, let's get crazy. Let's just, let's just do a, a Bedard, Gretzky, uh, Lemuel line. That's too many centers. I yeah, they figure it out. Yeah, too many guys playing out of position. It would never work. Yeah, that would never work. <laughs> Can't have three guys take one face off. No, that would that'd be yeah. awful. How about all time Hawks line mates for Connor? They're, they're stand, stand, uh, stand by. Stand by. Oh, it's they're, coming. They're, all right, all right. Stand by. Okay, Fair enough. We'll answer that one. All right. If there you could is. pick any pair uh, of wingers yes. in Blackhawks history to play on a line with Bedard, who would they be and why? And also, Jay, have you tried this on <laughs> NHL 23? Probably, right? I'm assuming. Uh, right. Connor like Bedard's the, current line mates in NHL 23 are. Uh, Boy, I've, I've been changing lines lately. Oh, Larmer is the right wing. The Waski blender is out. And uh, Taylor Hall is the left wing. Okay. Currently. But that would not be my dream. You said Larmer? Larmer. Larmer. Yeah. Larmer would be a good one. Larmer would be a good one. Al Secord would look really good yep. on, on Connor Bedard's line, too. Give me, give me, somebody give me Larmer or Secord, Bedard, and Roenick. I'll go, I'll go Larmer, Bedard, Roenick. Yeah, Roenick in the middle? Sure. Like uh, it's got to be wingers. That's the question. No, the question is wingers. Well, Rona can figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I would like to see uh, Connor Bedard with Tony Amante. Yeah. Amante with that speed and the ability to finish. Like, that guy scored 40 with nobody. Oh, yeah. With no help. I mean, he had Alexei Zhamnov, who I actually very much like, was a really good two second-line center that could play both ways. But 
Um, that's not what they thought they were getting, or at least what they said they were getting when they traded Roenick for well, him. That's not what the fans were hoping they were getting either. I heard Magic right. Johnson on skates from Bob Holford, I believe, <laughs> was the one who said that. Well, yeah, but he, but I Magic, Magic Johnson, Johnson smoked a pack of camels between periods every <laughs> Magic game. Magic Johnson not also usually. had all stars to pass the ball to. <laughs> yes, yeah, that yeah. made it. Yes, it's a lot easy to get assists when you have guys that could score on your lines. Yeah, give me. I'm gonna say I'm just uh, controversial, but give me a Monte and, and prime Patrick Kane. Um, Ooh, okay. K- Prime Patrick Kane, Counter Bedard, and that'd be special. Stan Makita. That'll work too. There you go. There's plenty um, to choose from. From Garris18, one of our loyal listeners, who would be the one guy you target based on true fit and roster construction in the 24 free agency class? True fit and roster construction. I want to bring um, up that free agency class right now. I mean, one, it depends on who actually hits free agency. Uh, but as far as roster construction, fit, where I think he would play, and who he would play with, I just, man, I, I, know, it, I know people don't like the name and don't like the style of play, but I just think William, William Nylander would fit this team, fit with Bedard really, really well. Like, that is an elite-level winger, who can, who's, has scored 40 goals before. He's got the, the talent in his hands. He's got the vision. He thinks the game similarly to Bedard. Um, I just think it would, it, would, it would fit really well as a top-line right-wing option alongside Bedard. I know the money might be a big, big contract in free agency, um, but as we just said, they have a lot of money to spend. Uh, Nylander is pretty much in the prime of his, of his playing career right now. That's a guy that I think if the, if, the, if the Maple Leafs move on from him or for whatever reason he's in that class, I think he's going to be one of those guys that is not necessarily the top free agent in the class, but one of the top that I think Kyle Davidson would be totally fine going after to say, look, we're, we're betting on him being very good for the next six, seven, eight years and ready to be one of the elite go-to options for a team that we're hoping contends in the next year to two years. On the same track, uh, the guy I would love to see is Sebastian Ajo from Carolina. I was going to say. I I mean, he is about the same age as Austin Matthews, slightly older, like uh, months older than Austin Matthews, Uh, has been through successful playoffs, hasn't won a cup, but has been through long playoff runs, and is kind of a guy who isn't going to be you know, the focal point, I don't think he's going to battle with Conor Bedard for the spotlight. Because uh, the Austin Matthews thing, that's the dream, right? But A, I don't think Toronto lets that happen. B, right. you've, unlike the previous GM, you've got to kind of look ahead at what the salary cap's going to bring. So if you're going to sign Austin Matthews to a $13, $13.5 million eight-year contract, it's a huge who investment. are you giving up in the future? Or yeah. as you can sign Ajo for maybe 9 10 something like that, or Nylander. Either way, yeah. maybe it's eleven I at think, that point. But I think out of those two, who's more likely to be available? Because I, because we think Carolina lets Aho I don't think hit the market. Hits, I don't think he does. But but if he does, I mean, yeah. They, how like, they how they much be, longer is their window crunched. open though? You know, Carolina. Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> well, they they got Aho. If they keep him around, they got Svechnikov. Um, Tavo. You have Tavo, Tavo's who's still to yet to hit thirty. Um, years old, you got a, still a pretty good defensive core. You know, you got Slavin. I know they're trying to move Pesci, but like, I don't know why. Um, Are they trying to they do got, it the fit Tarasenko? Isn't that the idea? Maybe or maybe Carlson or Carlson. Or but Carlson. Yeah. I don't know. It seems I, like I don't think on it. for what Carolina wants to do with their defensive group. Wouldn't you think Pesci fits better than Carlson? You'd think. I don't know. You think. Um, Maybe they feel though they need to. You also got Seth Jarvis. They there just need too. some offense. They yeah. just gotta, you know, no, yeah, they're, they're trying to they're trying to smother everybody all the time. But at some point, you got to put the puck in the net. Yeah. And Carlson will certainly help them do that. It just to me, it feels like Carlson's going to Pittsburgh. But yeah. why not? I don't know. All those twenty four guys, those guys will be free agents next summer. Um, maybe. Al was on the top of my list. The other guy not mentioned, uh, um, Elias Pedersen as well. Um, with uh, yeah. Vancouver would be fun yeah. uh, at just 25. He's the youngest is he of all those a, Is guys. he a UFA? Uh, yeah, he would yes. because he... No, well, it says RFA. Right? I'm sorry. Oh, he's, he's RFA. RFA okay. List, but still, you know. That, uh, that'd, be, that'd be hard. Yeah. I. That's but, a lot to give up. 
to to sign him because you got to imagine Vancouver yeah, but would at Vancouver's least. Vancouver's kind of silly, so maybe you can make a trade. Well, if they don't, <laughs> if they don't feel like they, rights. if they don't True. feel like he can get it done, yeah, they can trade the rights. That's right. For sure. oh. Maybe he doesn't want to stay there, but you know, what, you know Canucks fans, I exactly. just exactly. Oh. I mean, just to piss off Canuck fans, can you even imagine more, we stole their precious Connor Bedard, who was never a Canuck. <laughs> And remember, now, now next on a line with Pedersen. Thank you. In the 2025 classes, Tavares, Marner, Miko Rantanen. Uh, there's a lot of good young players. Uh, Drysital. Drysital. That's, you know, that's yeah. the it's one like, that I think. Yeah. People that's, that's should gonna be get. eyeballing more. Matthews is a pipe dream. I say that the the uh, Matthews becoming a Blackhawk. I know we talk a lot about it here. Most of it's in jest. Yeah, yeah. I think the odds of of Austin Matthews being a Chicago Blackhawk this time next year is like under five percent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, him zero. being anywhere besides Toronto is probably under fifteen percent. I mean, they they obviously have to make decisions on the guys we've named: Marner, Matthews, Nylander, and Tavares. I don't imagine it's it's not it can't be financially possible that all four of them stick around. No. I mean, if, so, I'm the, if I'm the Maple Leafs, I'm seeing who wants the last two years of John Tavares. Dude. Yeah. Because I mean, I know I that was the home, the homecoming, the great story. He hasn't won him shit. He's the oldest. He's making a lot of money. And it's not that he's played bad. It's no. just it's just not working. You need to change up that that. You think you need to change I up mean, that group? If and I want to keep three of those four guys going forward, I'm sorry, John Tavares is the odd man out. Yeah, he's only 32. It's not like he's ancient. No, no, but he's been playing since he's you know yeah 18, 19. So I hope they all. It's leave. been a while. <laughs> From yeah. Rooney 4, what Rooney, will you Rooney. be watching Bedard's rookie year that will leave you confident that he can stick at center? His face-off percentage. <laughs> and his defense. I mean, <laughs> yeah, so how yeah, he plays defensively. His, well, I, I, I think we talked you know, a, c- a couple shows ago about what are his offensive projections, and I think even if he's, let's say, sub-50% at the face-off dot, 48, 49, 47%, whatever it might be, if he's putting up, you know, 70, 80 points as a rookie playing center and he's not a defensive liability, which I don't think is going to be the case. Um, I think, you know, if, if, if he's putting out that production, you can imagine that he's going to continue to build upon that. And, yeah, maybe he's, maybe he's not your number one center like Jonathan Taze playing power play and penalty kill and winning 58% well, of his faceoffs. But if he's a number one center offensively and – is not a, a defensive liability. There's no reason not to not to have him down the middle, especially if you can you can figure out who can be some wings around him. Maybe Reichel doesn't stick at center because he can't win a faceoff, or or his two way game doesn't hold up at the NHL level consistently. Maybe Reichel's a wing on Bedard on, on Bedard's line, long term. So I'm I'm the only thing that I would say is a disqualifier for me is if he is if he is just absolutely garbage at the faceoff yeah. at the NHL level which again no, another thing that I don't think is a concern but we don't know until we see it. Yeah. If he can get if he can finish his rookie season at center against pretty much everybody else's number one centers you're talking about your veteran guys. If he can finish the season between 48 47 or 47 48% that, that's a successful season as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I know we, every, we want everybody to be around 50. But 50 if or could, better, If he yeah. could be 47, 48 as a rookie, f- taking face-offs against the Sidney Crosbys and the Ryan yeah. O'Reillys all mm-hmm. season, then that's encouraging. If he's at 35, 40, Down, then it's like, eh, let's, yeah, then, maybe then s- it's, let's try then, something different here. Yeah, then we start getting on the, the Kirby dock. Right. Move him. Move him to wing. Train. Two more questions from the Discord portion. Yes. Pleshin 13, two fun Pleshin. ones, I should say. Fun one, uh, it is, there is a debate between me and some friends. If Bedard was actually an unrestricted free agent, hypothetically, how much money would he command on the open market? Right now? I would assume, like yeah. If he was just an unrestricted free agent today? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there'd be a massive bidding war for him because you're getting all of his year, all of his prime years locked up. Yeah. You know, if you, so you'd sign him for an eight-year deal, ten million. I mean, there would be a there'd yeah. be a massive bidding war. I think there I think there's enough uh, known qu- quantities about his game that GMs would say, "Yeah, we're going to make this investment." I mean, look, you had teams losing on purpose just for the chance to get him, right? You know, so yeah, I think there'd be thirty-two teams interested in Connor Bedard, and it'd be a massive, massive bidding war. Yeah, at least ten million. Yeah. 
probably more. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, that's why I'm glad that uh, you know the NHL has those standard uh, entry level contracts for everybody. <laughs> it, it saves a lot of GMs um, shooting themselves in the foot. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. how many salary camps get ruined because you offered your top dr- draft pick? so much money and then he never yeah. Yeah. produces. Well, like, and look at look at like the NFL and stuff. They yeah. they had to they had to s- to put a cap on rookie deals because they were getting ridiculous. Sam yeah. Bradford, what was it, 50 million? Something something like that, like his his total contract right out of out of the draft and yeah. I think he was the last one to get something like that, right? Well, there's probably the yeah. reason he was the yeah. last yeah. one to get something him, like yeah. Right, yeah. So, yeah, it's it, professional sports general managers are their own worst enemies. Yes. All righty, last Discord question, Alexandre Faripas. Best concert you guys went to? Mine's difficult. My favorite Oof. band is Queen. I saw them twice live, best days of my life. Also Sweet. saw Ozzy Osbourne. It was a dream come true. Oh, Those cool. are emotional attachment ones. Yeah. The recent Ramstein one is that I tagged Jay and on Twitter, <laughs> went with the Oh My Captain jersey. Yeah. Nice. Was an effing show, still buzzing <laughs> about it a month later. That's God. a tough one. It's really hard. Ooh. I've been to hundreds of concerts. I, I I know I have not been to as many concerts as you guys, so I have I have two. I saw Foo Fighters at Wrigley Field a few summers ago, 2018. Uh, it was my first time seeing them. Uh, the, Wrigley as a concert venue is amazing. Uh, it was a great summer night. Like That's one of my core concert memories. Uh, so that was really cool. The other one, I was a senior in high school, and I can't believe I'm admitting this in public. I was going to see The Fray. I saw The Fray. And uh, for Ben Folds. Their, their opener, their opening band was 1,000 miles better than they were. Uh, and it was a band called Mute Math. Have you guys heard of them? No. Can't say I have. Yeah, no? no Lots of shaking heads. Them. Mute Math. Look them up. Uh, they're a band from New Orleans. Their live show was so... I, I haven't seen a band live... Uh, that put on a more like energetic, like thirty minutes of music that I've ever seen before. It was awesome. I was loving it. Oh, check that out. You want to take a stab at this too? <laughs> There's just so many. Um, Top three, maybe. Or I mean, one notable ones that stick out. I've, I mean, I've seen Pearl Jam literally one hundred times. Uh, one hundred one and one hundred two coming up in September. Lucky. Uh, wow. The <laughs> ninety five show at Soldier Field always sticks out, but the, I think my favorite Pearl Jam concert was. In October of 2000, the night before, it was at Allstate Arena the night before they had played um, the famous Ice Bowl show at Alpine Valley where it was literally like 26 degrees at <laughs> showtime and they like just rushed through this set like their equipment was freezing. Oh, God. So Pearl Jam usually was going to give you a solid three hours, but they just kind of like, we got to get the <laughs> F out of here. So the next night they played Allstate Arena indoors. And they said, hey, last night, we, we, you know, if you were there last night, thank you. We're going to make it up for you. And they played like a 37-song set, wow. just kept going and going. And I had fan club tickets that night, and I was like third row dead center. That was one of my favorite shows. Uh, and then I think one, uh, 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 I mean, one of my favorite live acts of all time is Bruce Springsteen. If you've never seen him, you have to see them once. Even if you're not the biggest fan of the music, just the energy at one yeah. of his shows is incredible. I think 2007, out of the 40-plus Springsteen shows I've been to, I think the my favorite was uh, Harley Davidson Fest in Milwaukee on 2007. Um, or maybe it was 2008. It was the final night of the, the Magic World Tour, so they kind of pulled out all the stops and played a great show, uh, just like in this open field. It was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, two of mine are bands you mentioned. I saw <coughs> Pearl Jam with My Morning Jacket opening in 2006. That's when I discovered My Morning Jacket. That was an amazing show. One of my favorite live bands of all time, too. Yes. Uh, second song into their set, I went and bought the record at the, <laughs> at the uh, what do you call it, the vending at the United merch Center. Stand. The merch. Merch stand. The and then uh, I saw Spring Scene there, and he performed the album Born to Run start to finish, and then another two and a half hours of songs. Oh, but I'm going to mention a band that I'm sure no one here has ever heard of. It's a band called Hem. They're from Brooklyn, New York. I saw them at the Old Town School of Folk Music. Oh, nice. And uh, their music is incredibly meaningful to me. And I'm, the only time I got to see them live, and it was like, I don't know, it was, it was, uh, it was like a dreamlike experience because uh, it's a band I love. I will always love. I long for them to come back, but they didn't have a ton of commercial success. Mm. Just released some beautiful records. Uh, Rabbit Songs and um, Funnel Cloud 
are two of their best albums. But Hem? H E M. Yeah, it's just very like folky, kind of orchestral. It's beautiful. It's nice. great stuff. So um, there you go. Those are my favorites. Those are the ones that yeah. stand out. I can do a whole week of episodes just on concerts yeah. I've been to. For real. <laughs> Concert that's crazy. Stories. You've seen Pearl Jam a hundred. You're going to be a hundred and two times. That's, Most I of mean, those that's times, awesome. though, was like those tours between uh, ninety eight and two thousand six, when I had far fewer responsibilities and a lot more disposable income. Like living <laughs> at home for a couple of those tours helped. Yeah, it was like a, a couple buddies of mine for just jumped in a car and just went and saw like 14 shows in a row. It just disappeared for three weeks and followed them. That That's how a lot of that happened. There's also that age where you are broke, so it doesn't matter. It's yeah. like, I'm broke is broke. Right, right, yeah. Like, what difference does it make? And tickets <laughs> and, and concert tickets weren't $400. Right, yeah, yeah right. right either. You, can go see, uh, you can go see seven Pearl Jam shows for the price of one Taylor Swift ticket yeah. today. I saw a, a ticket stub from a, for a concert. I think it was Pearl Jam Nirvana and Red Hot Chili Peppers were playing in 90, January of 91 I think it might have been. Like and the, the price on the ticket was like 1950 Yeah, yeah. And I was That's like, crazy. holy shit. That is crazy. I mean, I would say the majority of the Pearl Jam concerts I've been to, the tickets were under 40 bucks. Wow. Yeah, And they do their best to keep them cheap too. They do. Yeah. Uh, Josh says he saw Megadeth at the Aragon Brawl Room. Yes, I saw Pantera there. That's awesome. Um, that was a terrifying but awesome experience. Aragon Brawl Room. The Brawl Room. Yeah. <laughs> yep. The Brawl Room. That's, that's for the old sure. metalheads. Yeah. Another that's great awesome. show. I, I saw Rancid at the Metro, which was just great, on the Outcome the Wolves tour. Uh, unforgettable show. So they, we could do this for hours, so we shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> I, 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 uh, one more I'll, I'll, I'll say is uh, my, I got a bunch of friends that are in a band called Action Adventure. Shout out to them. Um, when they started their being a band and putting out music, one of their first shows was at some was literally in somebody's garage, uh, and there was like twenty people there in this like it was like a south suburb garage, and uh, now they've they've been tour they've been uh, they've done Riot Fest they've done um, uh, they've ta- uh, toured with like Hawthorne Heights and uh, a bunch of other bands from that like early two thousands pop punk uh, big fan of Hawthorne stage Heights. but yeah. Uh, so they've, they've been, they've been getting bigger, but yeah, I remember that, that band, that show. And my buddy is, uh, one of the guitarists in it. He at the time was working at Domino's and came from his shift to the show in, and played the show in his like Domino's <laughs> outfit, uh, uniform rather. But, uh, so yeah, that's one I'll, I'll always remember. Cause right. it was just like, I don't never, I don't think I've ever really been to a show just at someone's garage with like 10 other people. This is interesting. <laughs> Reminds me of going to see shows in high school at the fireside bowl. Yeah. The old bowling alley converted into a punk rock club. That yeah. was uh, that was a lot of fun back in the day. Yeah, had to had to be Rise Against for me. Play them at the United Center all the time. Local band. Saw them at Northern Island. It was a great show. Rise Definitely against. my favorite one. one. Um, this is from an email. Please keep my name anonymous. I have a question important and hard hitting. Can you all please categorize the Blackhawks as Barbie or Oppenheimer? We would all be <laughs> extremely grateful. The <laughs> <laughs> no Blackhawks. We go in player by player. <laughs> oh, I got kept God. friendly open. We can do it real quick. Yeah, real quick. Sure. Uh, Taylor Hall is Barbie. 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 Tyler Johnson is Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Sure. Uh, Athanasiu is Barbie. Yep. Felino and Perry. Oppenheimer. Oh, Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. No doubt. Big J Dick. Oppenheimer. Yeah. Yep. Kurashev. Ooh. Kurashev. I'd go Barbie. He's, I'd go right. Oppenheimer on Kurashev. He's a Barbenheimer. He's, now. he's he's a Barbenheimer. How yeah. about Ryan Donato? Don't know enough about him. I go Barbie. Uh, let's say, doubt, let's go say Barbie. Barbie. Yeah. Colin Blackwell would would fall down on his way to the movie theater. And <laughs> I think he'd game. go Barbie. He's Barbie. Yeah. Connor Bedard, you would think Barbie, but I'm going to go Oppenheimer with I him. I think he'd go Barbie. I'm going Barbie just because he's a teenager. Yeah. Cole Gutman. Uh, Oppenheimer. I don't know why. The Barbie. <laughs> Mackenzie Entwistle can't get into the movie since he has no parents, so it would have to be Barbie. <laughs> yeah. Probably Barbie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Boris Kachuk. Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Yeah. Taylor Radish. Barbie. I say Barbie. I would say Barbie. Seth Jones? Uh, I'm thinking Oppenheimer with him. Probably Oppenheimer. Probably yeah. Oppenheimer. Yeah. A political thriller, and I'll probably have some bad takes on it afterwards. Uh, Nikita Zaitsev? Uh, Barbie. Barbie. Yeah. Connor Murphy? I'm going Barbie. I think he'd go Murphy. Barbie. I think he'd go yeah. Barbie. Jared Sonority? Come on. Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. <laughs> Peter Mrazek? <laughs> Barbie. Uh, I'll say Barbie. Yeah. Soderbloom? Barbie. Barbie. Uh, how about Lucas Reichel? That's Barbie That's for sure. Barbie. Totally. Probably Barbie. Yeah. I think we did it. 
All right, we did it. Yeah, have you guys seen Barbie? Barbie? I saw it last no, night. No, I haven't seen either yet. It's really I funny. Either. It's a funny I it's movie. Great. Yeah, I, it's I really mean, funny. Seeing Oppenheimer on TV. My, my so. wife is is trying to uh, convince me to rent Barbie and just watch it at home rather than go to the theater. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, listen. I know like the Oppenheimer people were upset that they had to get released on the same weekend as Barbie, but it's done nothing but give them. Yeah, all it's, this it's free fine. Publi- it's giving them like free plug. Most yep. people who aren't going to who are going to go see Barbie aren't going to go see Oppenheimer and vice versa. So I wouldn't yeah, think there's a huge crossover. You never know, though. If it wasn't for these two movies coming out at the on the exact same day, and like the social media blow up of seeing both of them in the same day because they're polar opposite movies, I think you're right. I don't think as many people would have gone to Barbie to go right. see Oppenheimer and, and and vice versa. Yeah. So I don't know. I'll probably eventually see them both. Uh, I, I'm a big history guy, so I always get a little weary about the history movies, about uh, the inaccuracies that come out. Yeah, it's just for Nolan, though. Especially when there's like things that, like other subjects that I've actually read up a lot on. I'm the kind of guy that yells at the screen like, "That didn't happen." Yeah. <laughs> like, so oh, I'm, I, I'm I actually, actually, I, I had movie. one of those moments the other night um, with watching a show with my wife. It's it's set in the like, it's set at like Y2K, like ninety nine, two thousand. And uh, there's a, a, a scene where someone is, is video recording, like an old handheld video recorder in the, in the ni- 1990s. And they're like, we, we isolated the audio on, on this video. And this, the people that are talking are like on the opposite side of the room. I'm like, that would never happen <laughs> with that technology. Are you, and I, I, I totally ruined, ruined it for my wife. I was That's like, so, that's so wrong. It can impact a movie, I'm telling you. Yeah, those inaccuracies can can screw it up. You know what won't screw you up? Ooh. Factor meal kits. That's right. No, they won't. And they're the, good. Uh, the fine folks at Factor have uh, sent us some uh, delicious meal kits that uh, we've been enjoying at our household. And the smoothies, the smoothies, smoothies are excellent, are fantastic. And now that we're in the uh, thick of summer, you might be looking for the wholesome, convenient meals. To support sunny, active days, Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, can help you fuel up fast with flavorful and nutritious ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, eat well, and stay on track for reaching all of your goals. If you're too busy with your summer plans to cook but want to make sure you're eating well, well, Factor, you could skip the extra trip to the grocery store and the chopping and the prepping and the cleaning up too and still get all the flavor and nutritional quality you need Factors fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy, then go back outside and soak up the warm weather. They do make it super easy. They literally show up to your house in a box, cold. Well, the food does, not yes. the people. No, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I didn't read the ingredients that closely. <laughs> I did get the Soylent There's Green. There's not a Soylent Green I got factor. the Soylent Green uh, <laughs> menu option. But you just take them out, you put them in your fridge. When you're ready to eat, throw them in the microwave literally for two minutes. I had the uh, the garlic roasted garlic chicken with green beans the other day and mashed potatoes. Sounds good. It was fantastic. They have delicious, dietitian approved calorie smart meals that are around or less than 550 calories per serving. They have a protein plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. No matter what your dietary needs are they've got from keto to calorie smart vegan plus veggie and protein plus they're prepared by chefs and approved by dietitians each meals has all the ingredients you need to be, feel satisfied all day long while meeting your dietary goals so give them a, a check out over at factor this july get factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh flavor packed meals delivered to your door <coughs> ready in just two minutes no prep no mess Head to factormeals.com slash CHGO Blackhawks and use the, the code CHGO Blackhawks to get 50% off. CHGO Blackhawks 50 to get that 50% off. So use that once again. Make sure you're using our show because we're having a little kind of fun yeah, competition right. with this. So head over to factormeals.com slash CHGO Blackhawks, then use. Pick out the delicious meals you want, then use the promo code CHGO Hawks fifty, and you will get fifty percent off your entire order of your delicious Factor meals. And then a couple days later, they're there. You're eating. You're happy. Life is good. 
They are great. And unlike the other meal kits I've had in the past, I don't have to actually cook them. It's already done. Throw it in a microwave, perforate the uh, the cellophane, and you're good to go in two minutes. They're yep. really, really Try good Try the stuff. tropical fruit smoothies. Those are my, oh, those are my they're favorite. Great. They're delicious. Actually, I had one this morning. And another thing I had this morning um, came from Sunnyside, your home for judgment-free cannabis shopping, a place where all kinds of visitors are welcome to explore, discover, and purchase a wide array of high-quality products. Sunnyside has everything you need to elevate your summer. It's your one-stop shop for all your cannabis needs. No matter where you are on your cannabis journey, easy online ordering and in-store pickup are available, and they've got their Sunnyside uh, rewards program, the loyalty program. Check that out. You're going to want to check out my favorite brands, Good News. They've got the gummies, the rechargeable vape pens, and cartridges. Perfect for great moments with the crew. Mindy's, the best-tasting gummy and chocolate edibles created by James Beard award-winning chef Mindy Siegel and Cresco Labs. Just those uh, Blackberry Mindy's are awesome. And the good news, you got the fry and the counting sheep. If you have trouble sleeping and you don't want to feel high if you wake up in the middle of the night, th- those counting sheep from good news are great. Also, the great flower from Cresco, High Supply, Floracal, Wonder, Remedy, all great brands, all available from our friends at Sunnyside. And through August, head to sunnyside.shop. And use code CHGO25 at checkout for 25% off your total order. One use per customer. Not stackable with other promotions, but it's not only for new customers. Anyone can use that code CHGO25. Pick up everything you need to elevate your summer. Must be 21 plus or an Illinois MedCard holder. Sunnyside.shop. Promo code CHGO25. All right, let's get back to our bursting sack o mail. Uh, one more thing, Philip in the chat. You guys did mention Joey Anderson, oh, Barbie or Oppenheimer. Barbie, he's at Barbie. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. No one who calls Barbie. himself as Joey is is. Uh, <laughs> and it's fine, you know, nothing against him. But, you know. Yeah, he's at Barbie. Uh, from CM Seacrest, do you believe they will start hosting the Hawks convention again? With all the excitement surrounding the team and prospects, makes the most sense to get that going again. In his opinion, I mean, now is the time. Now would be it. Yeah. I mean, they can't do it this summer. There's no time to do that. No. But maybe next summer? Maybe. Yeah, and, and we've, we've talked about this before. The, the convention is, I think it's, it's a great outlet for fans to have, you know, access to, to the team and to players that they don't usually get. Um, it's a great way for fans to come together. The, you know, community of the Blackhawks, uh, I think, is, is, is great. Um, but I think one of the, the big kind of sticking points that we've talked about is kind of how do you how do you have the convention without honoring and bringing back a lot of the players from the, the cup era teams, one of them being 2010 and, you know, having to having to deal with that. But I think uh, the convention coming back should happen. I think, like you said, next year makes a lot of sense. We'll see if they do it or something like it. Like not maybe not necessarily the exact blueprint of what the convention was, but something like it, yeah, like a fan fest of some sort. You do sort. a fan fest at the United Center, maybe, you know, or, yeah, for or, training camp or whatever. Yeah, or yeah. A preseason game or whatever. Or, or like like the Bulls had that big thing uh, last yeah. summer. It was like a Bulls block party yeah, thing. You yeah, you could do something like that. You've got the, those parking lots at the United Center. You could use you could use the the, the concourse in the United Center for like autographs and meet and greets and. Do some fun events on the outside and make it make it a <coughs> make it a, like a free event for everybody to go yeah. to. If you don't want to do the big, you know, <coughs> excuse me, weekend long uh, convention. Yeah, I think I, the, the 2010 thing is a factor. I mean, if they're going to open up forums and they're going to have fan questions, fans are going to ask the questions. But guess what? Like, <laughs> your inaction at that time opens you up for that criticism forever. Yeah, right, sorry, right. it is what it is, and I know most of the people involved are not here anymore. Actually, aside from Rocky Words, there's no one left. Oh, well, Brian yeah. Campbell is still on the staff. Campbell, yeah, but th- that's it. So, I mean, it, and I, th- I think fans have the right to ask about that. And I think if as, any of those guys are on the dais. And I think as more time passes, the, I think there will be uh, less. Of that, as time goes on, and as people are further removed from it, um, so maybe that is a consideration of like not that they just say, "Oh, people will just forget over time," but I think as it has been addressed, as it can continues to be, um, you know, kind of addressed in the background of of, of what the Blackhawks try and do with community building, um, 
with those different initiatives that they've, they've tried to enact and be more uh, involved in, you know, over the last two years now it's been, um, I think that can help the team and the organization build up some, some better will with some of the fan base that was, you know, separated from the team because of all that. So Yeah, and I think the majority of the people that are going to spend the money to be at the fan convention and the – you know, be at these panels and wait in line and all this stuff are not the type of fans that are, are angry about these things and are still wanting to know things. So you may not get a lot of that, but you, you might get yeah. some. But again, as you said, it comes with the territory. You open yourself up. If you're going to do the full experience, you got to take, you know, the uncomfortable with the comfortable. Right. Uh, from our guy, Windy City Hockey, who also would like to see the convention come back. Since arbitrations hearing can get heated and cause damaged relationships, do you think Philip Kurashev's arbitration hearing could have damaged his and the Blackhawks relationship? I doubt I it. I don't think no, so. No, I think it's, it's just business. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't too far off, and I think the arbitrator sided closer to Kurashev's number than the Blackhawks. So, if anything, he probably felt... You know, maybe a little bit justified in in his case to the arbitrator compared to the Blackhawks. So yeah, I, I don't think there's any reason to think that you know relationships have soured or anything like that. When Davidson said it after the uh, during development camp, like said it's good business for Kurashev to do this. Like it makes sense for him to go out and try it. There's no no hard feelings at all. It's part of the business, and that's you don't want your GM acting emotionally this way. You know, like should would Philip Kurashev be mad at him if he gets a million dollars less than he wanted? You know, like it's it is business, and both both teams are both sides are trying to do what's best for their respective side. Right. So, Kershia wanted more money. The Hawks didn't want to. They went to arbitration. Okay, it's done. I think I think yeah. what's done is done. These guys, they don't, they just want to play hockey. Yeah. When you talk to them, any most you talk to the majority of these guys about contracts and and trades and stuff, they always say that's my agent's job. The agent, yeah, they right. just let their agent. So maybe there will be ill feelings between his agent and the Blackhawks. Players play. Yeah. They, they, their agent comes and says, like, okay, here's the deal I got for you. Cool. Where do I sign? Right, like, most right. of these guys don't, don't get into that heated argument. They just talk through their agents. They just want to play hockey. That's it. Very simple. From Anthony Arith, are NCAA players becoming more valuable to NHL teams? It seems the Hawks have a lot more NCAA prospects than I can remember which I do like, in parentheses. Green, Nazar, Moore, Renzel, Comesso, et cetera. I know I left out a ton more. Does this signal a shift in Blackhawks thinking, or is it an NHL thing? It's, it's an NCAA thing, really. Um, as, as years have gone on, uh, the, the NCAA and, and going that route is becoming more of a viable option for these, for these players um, rather than maybe playing in Canadian juniors or... Um, or, or we've seen some European prospects come over and play in, in college and, and have success. So I just, I just think the, the NCAA game, the, the programs that are, have built up, you know, near NHL caliber, you know, facilities and, and training regiments and, and the way that, you know, college goes about their season and their scheduling compared to Canadian juniors. And we've talked to Colby Cohen about this a number of times. Um, you get a lot more practice time in college. You get a lot more, um, you know, pinpointed development opportunities. Uh, you know, your games are mostly Thursday, Friday, Saturdays. Um, so you have a lot more time in the gym, a lot more, you know, recovery time between games. Whereas in, in the Canadian juniors, you, f you follow basically a professional schedule where you're playing, you know, three, three or four games a week and you have, you have some practice times and, uh, but but besides that, your time is kind of your own. Whereas in college, you're you're a little bit more structured. So, I think it's just it's just uh, the NCAA path is becoming a lot more viable for players, and I think we're seeing a lot of young players come out of college maybe a little bit more ready to make that jump to profession to the professional game than going through juniors. Yeah, it's become better. I mean, the NCAA as a whole has become better. You know, you're getting a lot of guys from Canada that now go to college route. Um, the competition has been better before NCAA was like five teams and the yeah. rest was kind of, eh, but you, look at Arizona you, state. Yeah. Universities are making the investment into the hockey programs and it's becoming a bigger feeder to the NHL than it ever has been in the past. You know, the NCAA was kind of like an afterthought for, for 
ho- uh, hockey prospects. Yeah. And now teams are like, I could draft a guy, and he can go play essentially, you know, close to AHL hockey for two or three years. I don't have to have him under contract. Yeah. He's going to get the development. He's going to get the weight room. He's going to get the the diet needs. He's, you know, God forbid there's an injury. He's going to get taken care of there as well. Right. And I don't have to have him under contract for three to four years if yeah. I don't have to. So just the resources are so are so great now. Yeah, especially yeah. when you're at one of these top twenty, top thirty programs, and there's so many more uh, elite programs than there used to be. Um, the, the way college hockey has grown over the last twenty years has, has been remarkable. Um, to the point where it was like, you know, you, it was unheard of to have NCAA players as first round draft picks. Right. Uh, and it was you, it was rare cases. Yeah, yeah. And if it was, it was like you know this, this like a Paul Carrillo was like one of the last big like true prospects that came out of the NCAA's that everybody had heard of. Right. And now you got guys like Kale McCarr. Car, that go Eichel, uh, Taze came out of college. Yeah, yeah. it yeah. feels like, it, and maybe it, it, just it grew. Could just be me, but it feels like Taves was one of the first ones, like to really start that revolution where college, Taves, like Korea, of course, was years, Zach years, years Carisa before him. Was but a it, couple of years ahead of Taves. Yeah, at, at but it started but to yeah. become more of a regular thing around that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah as, as you guys said, like the development of college hockey on its own, plus the resources. Yeah, the players and, get there. And if if you're a Canadian kid and you're you're a really good player, you go play in the OHL. Do you want to be a second, third line player on a really deep OHL team, or do you want to be Adam Fantilli and be the the guy at the University of Michigan? Right, right. I think you'd rather be Adam Fantilli. Seems easy, easy to me. From Nate Iverson, what's something you'd like to see from the Ice Hogs as a team this season? Also, would love to see you guys do a podcast from a game this year. That'd be fun. That would be I fun. Like that I idea. love that. Yep. Yeah. We'll have to check the schedule. They're doing a lot of renovations over there, so maybe they'll. Yeah, maybe, maybe they're making a podcast space. There you maybe. go. They fun. got Wi-Fi there now. That's, hey, that, that helps. That would help. That's a big Wi-Fi. help. Yes, we know from our experience at Bridgestone how much Wi-Fi yes needs Good to be rolled. Um, I would love to do a podcast from that little lobby area at the uh, the BMO. Maybe yeah. we'll check the Hawks bye week this year. Maybe we can make something happen. That sounds but, great. Uh, as far as what I want to see out of the Ice Hogs. <laughs> a deep playoff run. Yeah. I would like to see more than just five playoff games this season. Let's get to a Western Conference final. Let's get to Something, a Calder yeah. Cup final. Let's win a, bu- a couple of series, play 15, 16 playoff games. That would be huge for some of those young playoff uh, prospects that are going to be down there this year. Yeah, and, and just development too. Like I want to see Del Mastro and Allen and, and all those guys that are going to be at the AHL level next year grow even more, become guys that can log big minutes. And like you said, those long playoff runs are super, super valuable. And I wonder, like, how does this year's talent compare to last year's? Reichel will be gone. But otherwise, like, the D is going to get better with Del Mastro and yeah. Allen arriving. And, you know. I think you lose Reichel, but you bring in Colton Doc, Nolan Allen. Comesso. Um, Drew Comesso, Ethan Del Mastro, Leipen. J- Jalen Leipen, Ryder Rolston, like, you have a lot of those guys that are a little bit more up the up the ladder come coming into uh, coming into play, um, and yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna have some some guys fall down from the NHL lineup last year to to, to ne- next year and be in Rockford. A guy like Joey Anderson might be in Rockford. Um, Cole, who knows? Cole Gutman might be in, in Rockford if uh, if he doesn't make the yeah, Mackenzie you know, Entwistle, Reese Johnson. Yeah, these are those are guys that might uh, might be sent down because of the the more talented NHL roster that's that's coming up. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how those young guys develop. Um, I, I agree with, with both of your guys' statements. So the development of the young guys, a uh, sustained playoff run would be great. Um, I know it's not going to happen, but I'd also like to see Fat Hammy come back. That, yeah. Um, yeah. Sk- buff insulting. Hammy Lean is, Buff Hammy is still weird to me. It's I, not I, great. Yeah. Not a fan. No, it's scary. Like it's just it. Lo- it looks unnatural. Yeah, I want fat, fat hammy. Yeah, you can you can have them both. Bring you just you don't have to get rid of the lean buff in shape hammy, but bring fat hammy back too. Yeah, just say I'm, oh I'm he was. It. Yeah, you have Benny the Bull and double. Yeah, right. You can have two. You need two. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I saw still have guys like Luke Philp and Brent Sini and David Gus, those veterans. I yep. like to see uh, Anti Sorella stick with the Ice Hogs this year. Play in, play in North America. So and Marcel Marcel. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Could be fun. Um, 
You know, plenty you've of, got more plenty of people to care about. Last year they went the veteran route. Yeah. They loaded up with these AHL guys and they, they fell short. A lot of that had to do with a lot of those guys had to come up and spend chunks of time in the NHL, yeah. which was not part of the plan. So hopefully this year the NHL roster is deeper, so you're not going to have to rely on calling some of those guys up. Uh, only when you get you know rash of injuries. So they've got more guys in Rockford that matter to the Blackhawks' future this year than they've probably ever had since yeah. becoming uh, the Blackhawks affiliate, and they're, and that's only going to mm-hmm. continue over the next three or four seasons. Oh, let's yep. try to squeeze in two more before we wrap up. If we didn't get to your question today, we will get to it tomorrow. We had a ton of questions yeah, this week. This is so a part one, part two. For the off season, we just kind of got to get in the habit of planning on <laughs> a, a show and a half of mailbag questions. Yeah, that's you're fine. about halfway through now. So that's, great, that's, hit the halfway that's, part. That's great. Today. I love when we don't have to do any kind of programming <laughs> stuff. Let you guys decide what we talk about. Yeah. Let's do two more here, and then we'll so, wrap things up. So, from Andrew Nieve, do you see any players that might surprise the team in training camp and get an opening night spot? Opening night spot, excuse me. Connor Bedard. I'm yeah. <laughs> if he makes, the there's team. a big question if, if he'll make the team. Um, I'm gonna say for the for the sake of the question, Nolan Allen. Okay. That would, that would be a be, surprise. That would be a surprise. Yeah, we got a fourth uh, guest up there if you're on the YouTube chat. Somebody's walking <laughs> around like on the roof. There's a woman walking around. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, she's enjoying the nice right. hot Hopefully it's not Chicago shirtless dark woman for our YouTube rights. Don't, don't, don't jump. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's her home. I think we're good. I hope that's so. her home? I think somebody the lives roof there. The roof is yeah. her there home. she is. Hi. Hello. Uh, <laughs> we have to start charging her a sponsorship fee. What was the question again? Who's going to surprise? Who's going to surprise you and make the opening night roster? It's a tough question because there's going to be some competition this year. Yeah. Like, would Reese Johnson be considered a surprise? Would no. Would Mackenzie Entwistle be considered a surprise? Considering that. I'd say no. Uh, but, I, okay, so I'll do, I'll say Wyatt Kaiser would be kind of a surprise. Okay. I agree. Like, that would be a surprise yeah, like guy if he, if he makes it. Because I, I think he's going to get the Vlasic treatment and get the majority of the year in Rockford. But, you know, he may tell he may dictate otherwise yeah i'm gonna say colton doc i don't really know why <laughs> but if he has a strong preseason they could it seems like a guy who could play in the bottom six add some scoring punch yeah i don't know it's kind of early to say you know if we were underway with some playoff with some preseason games maybe it'd be easier to predict but sure i'll go with colton doc why not solid seems like a guy mature beyond his years all right from eric what teams do you think are on the same competitive trajectory as our Hawks. It seems to me that when the Hawks are competing again, we'll have to be worried about the Ducks, Coyotes in the West, and then the no, Devils, the uh, Buffalo, and, <laughs> and Blue Jackets. The road runs Ash through Jackets. the Central, feels pretty easy. Buffalo, no New Jersey. No one will ever be worried about the Coyotes. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I They're going to find a way to coyote it up. Yeah. <laughs> coyote ugly, right? Yeah. Uh, I think you maybe throw Philly in that list or a team that's rebuilding. Watch out, for yeah, but what's Watch out for the Sharks in three or four yeah. years. Yeah. Sharks, Anaheim has got to eventually be good, right? You'd think. You'd Theoretically. Think. Um, I think, yeah, I think New Jersey, Buffalo, those are good ones to worry Detroit. about. Detroit might figure it out. Um, and, yeah, I, I Montreal's mean. Montreal's going to be good in I don't the think East there's, years. Yeah, Montreal. Maybe I don't think there's any good. reason to doubt Colorado in the next three, four years is going to fall off a cliff. Yeah. Um, they might not be the same, but I don't think they're going to be uh, worrying about you know rebuilding or anything like that. Um, Vegas might still continue to piecemeal their way to Stanley Cup contention. Yeah, Kings should be good for a while. Winnipeg's going through a, a facelift, so that'll be interesting. Minnesota always seems to hang around and yeah, just be annoying, be mid. I, I do. I do think uh, you got a party going on back there or something. <laughs> uh, I do think. That that three day trip through uh, California is going to get a lot tougher over the next yeah, couple yeah, of seasons for sure. There's going to be some good some good hockey getting played out in California. In it's the, funny, in it's a lot of the come. same teams that they were competing against in the last yeah, L.A., kind of San Jose, Anaheim, yeah. Typical, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Not Vancouver though. No, I don't think we need to. <laughs> What's a team you don't have to worry about? That's yeah, <laughs> Nashville. The, yeah. Asshole. Well, hey, they're changing their culture there. 
Oh. Yeah. Oh, you want to do one more before we wrap things up? Sure. All right, let's do one we more. We can pull, uh, pull one more. Yeah, this was a good one, I thought. Do you think Nazar being hurt from the majority last year simply adds to a year uh, to his projected timeline, or do you think it stays the same as it was from Showtime? I think it depends on how this year goes. Yeah. yeah. If I he think, lights things up at Michigan, I, think I don't his, think it sets him back at I all. I think his timeline was probably all, always at least two years. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, if he, if he does what I think – we all hope and expect him to do this year at Michigan. Um, I think there'd be no concern that he's not uh, not ready to jump professionally. Yeah. <coughs> yep, I, I agree. I think two years was the plan f- from day one. And if it has to be a third year, it has yes. to be a third year. Yeah. There's no, there's no rush. Nope. I agree. Spe- speaking of rush, uh, if you want to get Miles your... Here. If you want to get your, uh, your basement or your home office or your actual at work office or your man cave or your she shed looking good you can rush on over to foco.com our friends at foco have the best gear around so you can get fitted out in hoodies shoes you can put up some signs and some bobbleheads and everything in between with your favorite team uh if 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 they foco can slap a logo on a bobblehead or on a sign or on a pennant or something they'll put it out there and you can go and get it it's baseball season the Aloha shirts, the straw hats. You can get uh, wear some of those out at Wrigley or out at Guaranteed Rate. You got polos, bags for tailgates, everything that you need. You can take a look around our set. A lot of the great stuff that we have here as set decorations came from FOCO, uh, and I think it looks great, and it can look great in your home too. So go to FOCO.com check, or check the link in the description below and use the promo code CHGO, and for all non-presale items, with that promo code CHGO, you are going to get 10% off your order. Again, that's foco.com, F-O-C-O.com. If you want the perfect accessory for that spiffy-looking spurt you got from Foco, mm-hmm. <coughs> that's when you call up on our friends at Shady Rays. They have you covered from the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at a very affordable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product. That's just as good, but I say even better than any expensive pair we've ever worn here at CHO. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for all your outdoor summertime adventures. That's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection of all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair or drop them in a lake like Mario does every year, even on day one, they told (laughs) us they will send you a brand new pair. Thankfully, Mario found his, so you didn't have to put this into action. No questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase. Together with their customers, Shady Rays is providing much-needed support to nonprofit partners across the U.S. through Shady Rays Impact. From building play sets for pediatric cancer patients to providing young adults with MS, the outdoor adventure of a lifetime, Shady Rays is making an impact in your community and others like it now and for years to come. And if you don't love your Shady Rays, but you're going to, trust me on that, you can exchange them for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's absolutely no risk when you shop. And exclusively for our listeners, you beautiful folks out there in podcast land, Shady Rays is giving you their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com, use the promo code CHGO, and you're going to get 50% off two or more pairs of their great sunglasses, rated five stars by over 250,000 people. All right, Uh, that's going to do it for this episode of the CHGO Blackhawks podcast. Smash that like button for us on your way out. We've got under 50 likes. That's not, I know it's hot. I know it's humid, but man, smash that like button for us. That's very, very helpful. Make Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page as well. And uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow with two. Little programming note, Wednesday, the show is at 1 p.m. For your planning purposes, 1 p.m., on Wednesday. So just mark that in your calendar now. Thursday, we will be at the... uh, the, the National Card Collection Convention yes, happening in Rose Rosemont. That yes. should be a good time, all too. This, all the shows will be broadcasting live from there. Yeah. It's going to so, be a uh, come big, check us big out fun Rosemont. day. Maybe we'll get some uh, card collecting content on that yeah. show. Buy a, some packs of old hockey cards and open them on the air. There, there you go. go. That is the National Sports Collectors Convention. There you go. And Rosemont uh, will be there. All of CHGO will be there on Thursday. So if you're there, come say hello, come wave, say hi, give us a hug, all that great stuff. I can take home a cool piece of memorabilia. We'll yeah. see what's around. Anyway, we'll Should talk to you CHGO uh, trading cards. tomorrow at 2, Wednesday at 1, and we'll see you Thursday in Rosemont on the CHGO Blackhawks podcast.